I got to play Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League during the closed alpha. I was notoriously quite coy um, <laughs> where uh, I, I wanted to talk about it, but I couldn't. They had an embargo up, so I couldn't talk about it even if I wanted to. But it was one of those things where like you guys were asking me, Luke, did you play Suicide Squad in the closed alpha? And I'm like, if the answer were yes, I couldn't tell you. And if the answer was no, I would be able to tell you no, but I'm not telling you no. So fill in the blanks. It's why it's so stupid to have uh, one of these play tests with an NDA when it's so publicly everybody played it. It was just dumb. Like they, there should have never been an NDA on this. I don't think. I think it should have been open. And I know they were worried about bugs and performance issues and stuff, but I think they should have let people stream it. I think they should have made it just an open thing. It could have been a closed beta, but that there wasn't an NDA for like the skull and bones thing where like you get invited to it, but it's public and you can talk about it and share information about it. Cause with these types of games, like a lot of people feel as though the developers and publishers are like trying to hide the negativity and the bad elements of it. And you can't afford that when people are already hyper critical of your game and are very skeptical of it. You have to shine the light and be like, no, we got nothing to hide. Look at it. It's amazing. That's what you need to do. And that's the opposite of what they've done. Instead, they have uh, had all of these NDAs and they've been very coy about it and they don't want to talk about it openly. It's been very, very problematic. Now that they've lifted this limitation on the NDA, I'm allowed to talk about it and share my thoughts on it. There are some limitations. I can't show any gameplay. I can't show uh, any screen caps or anything. Not that that would be that useful because everything was like watermarked out the wazoo. So like if you were playing the game, it would just be watermark, watermark, watermark all over the place. And it would be very, very difficult to even tell what was going on. But it is one of those games that uh, that is kind of like that. As for like... Um, the actual gameplay itself, just to answer your questions, I did do a dedicated video on the main channel going through all of this. So if you want to hear like my extended thoughts, I guess you can go there. But um, just to answer some of your direct questions that you guys have put in chat um, while watching live, uh, are the characters really different or just feel like skins? The, so the movement feels different. Like as you can see with uh, King Shark, he, I always almost call him King DDD. It's so stupid that I always do that. <laughs> something deep within me wants that to be true. So the, the movement does feel different. King Shark being able to just leap around does feel kind of cool. He has the ground smash, which is cool. Um, and feels very, very different because some of these other characters, this is still King Shark. Does this gameplay change? I can't tell. No, it's always King Shark. That's okay. They do feel different. Boomerang, I actually kind of like his movement potentially the best. It's kind of a cool throw this thing out there. He throws the boomerang and it goes off in the distance for a minute. And then as you start to fall from the jump, he warps to the, the boomerang and then he can do that a couple times. So that felt kind of cool. Um, the movement is relatively smooth. The world does feel shockingly empty though. Like I know it's a big city and there's a lot going on here, but literally everything you see is just dead. Like there's nothing on the city streets. There's a couple of roaming little enemies. Like there's this zit covered helicopter flying around, but like that's basically it. Nothing I've experienced played or seen in trailers shows the city to be anything but completely dead. And they explain it in the story. They say, oh, well, Brainiac captured everybody and all the civilians were turned into his minions who are the ones that you're fighting. There's no saving them. They're just, they're basically already dead. It's not my fault that they explained it away. It still is stupid and boring. Like at least in even Arkham Knight, there's still like cars driving around. You can still see people and brutes walking around the city streets, but this is just totally empty and dead. It almost feels like when you're playing one of those games and it's just a big open map without any of the NPCs spawned in, or like if you did a kill all command in new Vegas or something, and it just kills all the NPCs off, it kind of feels like that. It's just, it feels like there should be more going on in the city, but instead it's just a big playground of blocks and it's, it's just kind of underwhelming. As for combat and movement and stuff, King Shark is probably the one that feels really different because he has the minigun. I, I think Deadshot, you're able to do more of like a sniper based build. So you're able to do that. Um, for Boomerang, I use like a shotgun. Um, Harley Quinn was more standard with just a typical rifle. So they felt a little bit different, but honestly, like the core gameplay style is not that different. King Shark might push in a little bit closer, which would make sense because he has this ground pound smash like you can see here. So it makes sense that he would get in right up next to enemies, but you would think that that would be paired with like a big ass shotgun or like a, a multi 
chambered like mag of of shotgun i forget what they call them but um there's a particular type of shotgun that's just like basically a mini gun but for shotgun shells and you would think that that would be that maybe that's in the game later but the version we got to play there wasn't anything like that and a lot of the game is this it's running around killing blue and purple enemies and then once all those enemies are dead arbitrarily you're able to shoot the weak point on this and then you can break that and that breaks the cannon and you can move on to the next area it's it's just very very repetitive you see the only thing going on in the city two guys down there at the very bottom the complaints about ui were also interesting like people said that that wasn't a fair critique i have in my original notes playing it i have notes saying the ui seems really busy because there's all sorts of stuff on screen all the time especially when you start to take on missions that have like timers or AOE things where like you have to keep enemies out of this circle by the time the, the clock runs out, they have to be out of that circle and that that's its own meter and tracker and it just gets very busy very quickly. Playing with friends is definitely the way it's designed. It's clearly built for that. However, it does get a little annoying when one player is hanging back or is moving a little more slowly because once one player reaches the objective marker and stands there you uh, if you stand there long enough um it will start a countdown timer and then warp all of the other players to that location kind of without them consenting so uh it's it's kind of annoying and then these things are constantly all over the game there's these big circles that you stand in and that triggers some dialogue that plays out yeah you see the waiting for players um so you wait for the players to get over there. So there's a lot of this game where you just end up like getting to the location because you're good at movement. And then you just stand around waiting for other players to come. It's really stupid. Um, and unfortunately, it's a trope of these looter shooter type games that are semi open world, but it just happens. Um, you see the timer ran out. So now the player is going to be warped over. And that just is what it is. Dialogue plays out and then more combat. Um, it is true that you can turn off like the damage numbers. If you don't like that, you can do that. But as you can see, there's still a lot of busy UI. Like there's still the combo counters. There's all this, there's terminal claim, get out there and clear surrounding enemies. And then hack has control of terminal a, and then this thing with meters and stuff, player trackers and the XP counters and ability trackers and prompts. There's just a lot going on. It is very, very busy in combat. When you're actually playing, it's not as uh, like interruptive as you might think because your eyes are always pretty much centered right here and you're not looking too much outside of that circle unless you're trying to look for information in the ui but screenshot wise it definitely is a little jarring beyond that uh core differences like gameplay wise there's some little differences not that major i didn't feel like i had to play that differently but then again we were playing the very early game and i would imagine players will only specialize more and more and more as the time goes on i would encourage rocksteady to share some late game footage of like end game builds to show how different they can become i think that would do a lot to i think comfort players who feel that the players or the, the play styles are not that different but still it's uh they felt pretty samey to me beyond movement and maybe the broad archetypes of weapons the the one that felt the most different was probably boomerang because he had a shotgun and he could do this combo where he like meleeed them up into the air and then shotgun blasted him that felt very different everybody else kind of played the same at medium to long range swinging around a lot um out of 10 what would you rate the game based on what i played i mean it was like a, a six or a seven out of ten um there's like 10 minutes of quality story content and then two hours of this and then 10 minutes of quality story content and then 10 minutes of the of, of, or two hours of this again like it's very very grindy in these repetitive combat encounters that i just don't find particularly fun for players that enjoy the combat a lot it's going to be awesome for them but for me i was getting burnt out after just a couple of hours um i've absolutely zero interest in the game i wouldn't even if it looked like it was going to be good. Oh yeah, just because of the nature of it. A lot of fans are like that. That's the difficulty for Rocksteady. And I feel for them because they're fighting an uphill battle. Their core fan base, like normally what happens, um, I think, I, I'm sorry, I have to. I have to, everybody. Normally for a game that comes out, it's like the level of hype and interest in the game starts at a certain level. So if you think of this maybe just as like, this is the total unit sold or something or the level of interest in the game on the the vertical axis um and then this is just time if your studio is really popular like let's say i don't know, cd project red drops the witcher 4 they probably start 
like up here, right? Because the interest is already really high. People are already really, really hyped because their core fan base is really hyped for that game specifically. And as the game comes out, reviews drop and everything goes well, it just only goes better and better and the hype gets crazy high. Same with like uh, Rockstar with GTA 6. They probably are starting up here because everybody loves GTA 6. They're starting almost at max hype. Everybody's talking about the game. Everybody wants it. For Suicide Squad, when they first announced it, it was like here. Because people are like, okay, well, I mean, it's like a shooter game. Not really Rocksteady's forte, but it's Rocksteady. They made some of my favorite games ever. I'm interested. But then we found out that it's a live service, like looter shooter, and it's not at all the game people wanted from Rocksteady. And their core fans are super disappointed that this is what they've been working on for almost a decade. So then it drops down here. And there's still like a core group of people that love looter shooter games. This little group down here um, between these two sections but far lower than if they just had started with their core fan base of excited players that wanted to try it. And so now they're fighting an uphill battle, trying to generate that interest over time by showing the game and making people realize, oh, it's actually pretty good. But they are starting at a huge disadvantage compared to some other big games that have a lot of interest behind them to start with. Um, just because they are a studio that doesn't make this kind of game and they're starting to make this kind of game. And it's not even necessarily just that. It's also what players are missing out on. They're not getting another Arkham game. They're getting this instead. And if this succeeds, they're definitely not getting another Arkham game anytime soon because Rocksteady has to support this game. So a lot of core Rocksteady fans are not just uninterested in this. They're actively rooting against it because if this is successful, they don't get the game they want ever again, <laughs> which puts them in a weird position. People are like, why are people so bitter and so negative towards Suicide Squad? Exactly that. It is exactly because if this is successful, they never get their favorite type of game again. They never get the rock steady of old back because the studio will turn into a support studio. Just like when Naughty Dog said, hey, if we did The Last of Us online and it was successful, we'd have to support it. And we basically would never make a single player game again. We wouldn't have the capacity to do it. So a lot of people are looking at this and saying, okay, well, I really hope this isn't successful because I don't want to miss out on that. I want another rock steady golden age game. I don't think we'll ever get it again because I think the core devs have largely left since then, but you know, time will, time will tell. What's the combat feel like? Uh, I've been trying to avoid comparing to the Arkham series, but it seems to be the go-to. Yeah, it doesn't feel at all like the Arkham series at all. It It's a, I mean, in a lot of ways it feels kind of like the avengers game you just have different archetypes of weaponry and then you run around shooting waves and waves of enemies occasionally a little boss fight will happen but most of the boss fights are not just like bullet sponges though there are some like that a lot of it is like more not even puzzle based encounters but like tedium encounters like the example is the flash um, I think this whole section is chasing the flash but basically like when you're hunting the flash he just warps around so like you see here he just like warps away and you chase him down and then you might shoot him a few times and then you warp around and then you chase him some more and then he warps around. Like that's the whole boss fight. It's not even really a fight. It's just chasing an objective marker. And that's the thing is like, this is why they've been pushing the movement so much in all of the marketing materials. Everything is about movement, movement, movement. Oh yeah. The original movement of, of shark is way different than the movement of, of uh, Harley Quinn. And you see right here, they arrive first, so now they're just standing and waiting for him to arrive. That's the thing that drives me the most crazy and drove me and my friends crazy. It's like, we would be good at movement, but one of us got distracted or accidentally went the wrong way because the UI is really busy and it can be confusing sometimes. And so they just end up standing around doing nothing for 20 seconds, 30 seconds, which is far more boring than you would think. They've been pushing the movement stuff so much because so much of the game is just swinging around and moving around the empty city. It's a lot of the game. What happened here? Oh, look at this. So Boomerang is standing just barely outside the circle. And as a result, it doesn't trigger. Even in this gameplay, because he's standing a few feet outside of the circle during this play test that we're doing, it's not counted. So they have to wait for this timer to count down. And then he's going to warp to the circle a few feet forward. And then they can continue in the story. It's just, again, it's a, a common trope of, of these types of games, but it, drives me crazy. And then the tank sections, which are really weird. I think it's built on the same like core mechanics of the bat tank, you know, 
of the Batmobile in Arkham Knight because it feels and moves very similarly, but now in three dimensions. And it just feels weird. It's it's just kind of an out of place addition. It doesn't feel like the natural addition to combat. It just feels like, well, let's add in a tank. So there's more that you can customize and grind upgrades for. And it's just, I don't know if it works. I do think it's funny that King Shark doesn't actually really fit inside. So he kind of has to lean out of it while he's inside. That's a good touch, but still. Yeah. How long do you expect the combat loop to take to get good with builds, etc.? I mean, everybody that's played it so far, it seems like the farthest anybody's been allowed to get is like three, four hours in. And there are some upgrades. The skill tree has stuff like, oh, you can increase grenade damage by 1.5 times, uh, but the recharge is slower. And then they also have stuff like, oh, well, your shotgun attacks do increase blast damage and have the chance at 30% to knock an enemy back. It's like, okay. There's, there's little tweaks like that, but I personally don't foresee much of this being highly, highly customized. I think the characters are always going to play kind of similarly. Um, you can see this, like most of the encounter is you just swinging around shooting him when he decides to stand still and then like lots of meters. And again, this is what they mean with the UI is there's just tons of meters everywhere meters and lists and stuff it's just a lot i don't know the, again the, the types of people that really love this type of game and these types of encounters and boss fights are gonna love it um they're gonna be obsessed with it and the game's gonna be awesome but i just don't foresee myself like doing this once and being like wow that was awesome now i'm gonna go replay it 15 times with my friends like i just don't see that happening probably play it once and then not touch it again for a game marketed as thousand hours it gets boring after single digit hours tldr yeah basically that's kind of the common thread with it i i think at its core as i've said uh, many times it's not a game designed for me it's designed for players like really into looter shooters that's why warner brothers did not invite me to the the preview event they invited people who played marvel's avengers people who covered that game in extensive detail who were really obsessed with it, that covered it for you know a full year after it launched and still were hyping it up. That's who they're trying to go for. They have already realized, I think, that players like me are gonna get the game and probably find it pretty disappointing if they play it. And otherwise, a lot of other people are just not gonna touch it. They know that. So instead of going after their fan base, they're going after a new market of players, trying to find a new fan base to latch onto. And they might be successful. I mean, honestly, in five years, maybe Rocksteady is considered to be like a bungee. They're like, oh yeah, they're the amazing developers of that Suicide Squad game that's live service. It's so good. I can't believe it's still got so much content coming out all the time. It's so good. But I think more likely this thing probably sells a lot of units day one. People play it for the story, have a decent time with it, and then put it down. I think a lot of their the players that are going to enjoy this are going to play it like a single player game and then not touch it after that and again for a live service game that is considered a failure and i just think so many people are misunderstanding that like they think well i'm gonna buy it and play it for the story and i'm gonna have a great time so you're just being negative for rocksteady that's like one of the worst things you could say of course they're glad to just get the 70 bucks up front but they want you to play this for years you playing it for 20 30 hours is the worst thing you could say and i personally I'm kind of expecting that there's going to be a lot of grind before you can take on some of the later story missions. Because I think they know that. They know that the story is what's keeping people going. And they're not going to give you a way out after 30 hours. They want you to grind for Brandon hundreds. Brandon Reyes donated $4.99 through Super Chat. Thank you. Am I stupid like what's the loop? Going to different points and defending them like what's the goal? Uh, Within the story, it's usually tied with a, a narrative objective so in this case you know go and kill the flash like that's that's basically uh the point of it um as they put ever so eloquently decoupler charge shoot the flash but like it's it's usually tied behind that or it's get to this area and when you arrive in that area there's a combat encounter and there's a bunch of brutes waiting there to fight or it's okay clear these terminals and protect the terminals while the hacker lady hacks into them and it's usually stuff like that. Again, tropes of looter shooter type games. Nothing really original. There wasn't a single encounter except for one story-based thing around Batman that I would consider original. Um, the Batman thing was cool, but it lasted all of like seven minutes and then was over. Beyond that, it is just kind of going through the motions. I mean, it's, it's a typical looter shooter type game where you are told to do X, 
Don't think about it too much. Just go and do it. And that will take you 20 minutes. And that's 20 minutes of your time that has now been burnt. And you got some rewards and XP and loot. And then you use that to go and upgrade your guns. And after upgrading your guns, you can then have an easier time with that. So maybe you take on like a harder difficulty. That harder difficulty will give you more XP and loot. It's just the cycle of leveling up so that you can take on harder stuff so that you can level up so you can take on harder stuff. For some people, it's like, well, if there's not a story that cohesively ties that together, I'm not interested. That's why they're trying to put the story in. But it's, uh, I, I mean, I agree. It's for a lot of people, it's like, what's the point? That's why it's it's tied behind looter shooters. It's not tied behind your typical uh, narrative type game. It's just not that kind of game. How do you feel about the future of Rocksteady if their game ends up flopping? I already think most of the core team that made like Batman Arkham Knight is probably gone. It seems like there's not much of that team left um, because they've been hiring a lot of people specializing in live service looter shooter games over the last nine years because they were going to make this. And so a lot of the core team that was really good at the linear narrative stuff some of them are still there, but I think a lot of them have also moved on to other projects or are contractors now and kind of bounce between Naughty Dog or Santa Monica and then this, and they just go and work on individual little projects. So I think the core Rocksteady studio is not really there anymore. There's remnants of it for sure. Um, there's designers and directors and stuff that have been there since the very beginning. Um, you can see them in game trailers and reviews and press events all going all the way back to like 2010 with Batman Arkham City. But yeah, I think the core rock steady that people knew and loved a decade ago is probably not there anymore. I don't think it's the same company, really. Uh, you can't spend a decade working on something like this, hiring and firing people accordingly and expect to have the same team left over at the end. I hope it flops so badly. It slaps them back to we need to focus on story driven games. Yeah, the the thing is like it it might. It's just really hard to tell right now based on what the executives are saying if this is the product of executives telling them to do this, or if this honestly was them going and saying to Warner Brothers executives, hey, we think we can do this. Let us try it. And then just being kind of shell-shocked when the response was not that positive. Because with all these games, when they're like, like this thing entered production, probably like 2016 or 17 is when it really entered full production. And that means that like, back in 2016 17 like destiny was the hot new thing and you know live service looter shooters were were not that kind of <laughs> uh trudged out like people were used to them or were not used to them and it was like fresh and exciting people were interested in it and then it takes six seven years to put the game together and we get to this point and by now everybody's sick of these kinds of games but it's kind of too late because they spent all this time building it it's the problem with chasing trends like if you want to be a groundbreaking studio, you have to make your own waves. And if you learn to ride waves, you'll never actually make any yourself. You'll just kind of glide along. And guess what? It's really, really easy to miss the wave when you're focused so much on riding them. Today's rock city is not the same as the Arkham guys. The studio is much larger and probably costs an insane amount to run. They'll be supporting live service until the inevitable layoffs. Yeah, I kind of foresee that happening too, unfortunately. Um, it's really, really too bad. But I, I just think that a game like this that is expensive to maintain and upkeep i don't see anybody even the people that are like that are going long that are are um bullish on this they're saying oh i'll probably play it for like a month or two but i, I don't know if them adding a playable character makes me go through the whole story again the whole game again probably not and that's that's just a problem rock city could be allegedly going into the same a uh, certain bad direction as pure evil people, including Bethesda, Ubisoft, Activision, uh, maybe, I, I mean, most of this I'm more inclined to believe is from the executive side of things. That's my stance. Um, there's an amazing team of developers over at Rocksteady, incredibly talented people. My frustration and hopefully the frustration of others is that they are a world-class studio that specializes in one thing. And instead of doing that one thing that they're amazing at, they're working on, uh, a game that kind of like epitomizes all the problems with modern gaming. And that is my frustration is that I feel they are better than this. And it's just disappointing to see that they are having to spend all this time and money working on this. Like imagine what they could have done with nine years working on a next generation Arkham game or Arkham type game. I, I just, 
it would be so amazing but you know instead we get this is it better than gotham knights it ran a lot better than gotham knights gotham knights i think was a live service game that at some point had all the live service stuff stripped out of it there was a lot of stuff like that see a 30 second counter gotta stand around waiting and doing nothing um <laughs> and they shouldn't have cut it they should have left it because that's what a lot of the game is but uh yeah it's just gives me a headache uh, gotham knights i think was a live service game that had it stripped out and so when we got it it was just a really weird game that didn't really know what it was trying to be and so it was like half of both worlds suicide squad at least is like yeah we're a live service game and we're owning it check it out so i think suicide squad is going to be a more comprehensive game but as for whether it's better quote unquote i have no idea i will say gotham knights had one of the stupidest plot twist endings ever no spoilers but jesus it was so dumb so dumb yeah sunset overdrive seems to have done this way better ages ago yeah it's kind of like a blend of of arkham knights mixed with sunset overdrive mixed with your typical looter shooter and there's a place for that i think it's just i'm not sure if this is the the blend for it that's all anything new is though nothing is truly original anymore it's all part of things put together yeah and that's that's fine i mean it's okay to blend stuff together it's how this stuff comes together and blends together that kind of defines how it works but like you see once again here it is go get to the safe zone at the truck everybody get to the safe zone it's all based around safe zones and timers and coming off of like batman arkham games where it's like all tied in a kind of grounded quest line where it's oh you're clearing this out and you're clearing this objective because you've got to run and get this guy from this objective you got to go talk to Cobblepot, and so to get to him you have to go through the whatever iceberg lounge and you know there's there's a stealth sequence you have to complete and you know it all made sense in the world in the story whereas this is just okay fight another thousand waves of these enemies and also are we just going to ignore the fact that like brainiac has this gigantic robot monster with all these crazy arms why could he not put like these big tanks that you have to go and fight and then just wait for you to go under it and then crush you like why, why is he doing it in the most convoluted way possible of just having waves and waves of enemies why have multiple waves when they teleport in why not just teleport in a million of these guys all at once and clear these guys out immediately like no part of it really makes sense it's just just annoying and the more I talk about it, the more frustrated I get. Tons of stuff is contradicted or licensed on top of having board members, too many people um, to pay to take big risks anymore. Yeah, well, and that's kind of the funny and perhaps uh, reassuring thing about a game that had reviews drop today, which is, um, of course, Prince of Persia and The Lost Crown, which I've been playing a bit. And I'm just going to say it is that good. Um, it's very, very good. Um, yeah, it's just, yeah, I mean, it's very good. It's probably the best platformer slash 2D combat, like side-scroller game I've played in the last, I don't even know how long. It's very, very good. And it's coming from Ubisoft. And this was presumably a, a game that cost them a lot less to make than your big, epic, like AAA Assassin's Creed kind of reboot of this franchise. And I think it it is going to do the job. And I encourage people to go and play it and try it. Um, because it really is that good. And I think hopefully these developers and publishers realize there is a place for like double A games. There is a place for games that are not $200 million. Not every game has to be $200 million to be worth buying. And we as a community and as fans and gamers, we also need to reward that by voting with our wallets. When we see a good double A game, support it. Like I know it's, it's easy for like me to just be like, well, go and spend full price on this game. And it's not always that easy for people. I totally get that. But if you want these publishers to make more, excuse me, more games kind of like this in the AA scale that are launching at like 40, 50 bucks, you have to buy them. If you wait till sale or wait till it goes on Game Pass, they're just not going to make them. And then you're going to end up where we've been for the last few years where everything is just an ocean of AAA games, most of which are kind of disappointing flops. Um, and you know, I'm experimenting with ways to try and cover these games more and talk about them more and give them more recognition, um, because I think they need it. And I think it's healthier for the industry if we, if we do that, but I mean, you can see some of the top grossing games of 2023 were smaller, like spinoff indie games, like lethal company made a stupid amount of money and 
it's developed by like uh, just a few people. One or uh, I think maybe even one person. I don't remember exactly how many it was, but it's a very small team that's responsible for that game. And it's made tons of money. And like, what was that? That like eight bit looking shooter game that all the Battlefield fans went to battle bit i think you know it's crazy it's also appropriately priced yeah exactly all of this to say suicide squad kill the justice league i've played it i think it's it, it was what i thought it was going to be a fine looter shooter uh but does nothing really novel nothing that interesting it's just uh, a sort of trend chasing kind of uh, generic looter shooter and it has some good story stuff. And I think the characters are interesting and it could be an interesting story all told, but you get those story elements, like 10 minutes of story stuff with two hours of looter shooter grind and then 10 minutes of story stuff and then two hours of looter shooter grind. And then maybe a 20 minute boss fight that's really kind of drawn out and like bullet spongy. And then two hours of grind and then 10 minutes of story stuff. And it's just like, it's just a little frustrating. Yeah. Knowledgeable Zapdos. It's, it is very good. Uh, the Batman section, it is very good. There's no way to really describe it with any specificity without just spoiling everything about it. And it was the highlight of the opening few hours of the game. So I don't want to spoil that for people in case they do end up trying the game. Cause it was honestly pretty cool. Um, but it lasted all of like, you know, seven to 10 minutes and then it's over and then it's back to the regular grind of the game. So it was a cool kind of nod to, to Arkham in a cool way. Honestly, it just made me bummed. I wasn't playing an Arkham game, <laughs> which I think was the opposite of the intention, but yeah, it was just, it was crazy. He took my thing. <laughs>